Raising consciousness might be described to be about changing our perspective from being a victim, from negative thoughts and cyclic thoughts, feeling daunted and overwhelmed. And raising consciousness is much more because it is about lifting from being stuck in the mode of figuring things out to relying upon our higher guidance system that allows us to navigate knowing there are always lessons, but we are using our innate intuition that is available. But how do we get there and why? Getting to higher levels of consciousness has been marketed to us through the meditation industry, and this is one way. However, many people who have tried those marketed methods feel they can't get the benefits because they're unable to follow the model and feel they have failed. And this is often because this method is at the least challenging to quiet thoughts or nearly impossible for many people. Another aspect of this method is knowing there are a myriad of benefits, but it becomes another chore to mark off the daily list to progress because it is an unpleasant task that is difficult and even more of a struggle. However, other simpler methods and ancient methods of accessing all the benefits of meditation that is shifting from ordinary consciousness into relaxed states that are regenerative from, into, from beta brainwaves that bind us in our trauma and vigilance. Other characteristics of meditation are changes in our heart rate and our breathing respiration, which occur simultaneously with the changes in our brainwaves. These are noticeable as subtle shifts and often become increasingly significant with continued and regular practice because they deepen over time. We can even start using the word meditation to have a broad brush application to different methods that get us out of beta brainwaves and into alpha and deeper states. So many years ago, I heard Jill Purse share a story about the Buddha and asking his students to promote the use of meditation because of the benefits. The story goes, the Buddha brought a group of his students together and gave them a task. And the task was to go out throughout the world in many different places and teach meditation. At the end of one year, they would reconvene at the same location and repeat or report on how well their teaching methods of meditation worked and how effectively they gave the benefits to the people. After the year, all the students returned to the designated location and reported on their success. The st one student who had the most success was the one who used sound and music, specific sounds and music that easily transported the listener, shifted brainwaves, heart rate, and respiration simply by listening. This ancient story tells us meditation has been considered extremely valuable to our development and the use of it has been going on for thousands of years as well as the method lifts us into higher consciousness and raises our awareness. Now we know through recent research in scientific studies that meditation has benefits that are far reaching to our physical body, building the immune system with our emotional and mental states, building a mental and emotional regulation instead of dysregulation, changing our trauma response through healing and restoration and working with the neurological system, releasing the stress response, which is also connected to inflammation and diminishing production of cortisol, which is the stress response, and also a biochemical changes resulting in the production of GABA, serotonin, and dopamine and oxytocin, 
which are the things that are transformative to our physical body, our mind, emotions, and our interconnection, and build all of those systems, the mental, emotional, neurological, biochemical, and immune system, and our physical body responses. Getting the benefits of all the research, using sound, specific sound as a transformative element, allows us to easily and quickly access these meditation states through listening just as it did thousands of years ago. This is partly because we have a focus. The sounds are specific tones and frequencies and repetitions, and they carry us and facilitate shifts in consciousness and hold us so our attention is on the sound and we're relaxed into allowing our listening to continue with the sounds. One additional component of the transformative sounds are the rhythms. Using only particular rhythms to facilitate sound and music meditation in ancient times is just as useful today and rhythms have deeply connected us because we are so familiar, because we live with specific rhythms within and around us. When we encounter particular sound rhythms and patterns, they are transformative and healing regenerative methods and also raise consciousness. These sound healing rhythms are present in our own heartbeat, as well as the heartbeat of our mother while we're in utero, which has a specific beat and space between the beats that we know on a deep internal level, often beneath our awareness. Other consistent rhythms we rely upon in our world that we're often not even aware of that are comforting and transformative are like the sounds of the ocean waves going in and out, the sunlight waves of energy and light, our own electromagnetic waves from our body that are part of our energy field known as the auric field and layers of the energy field, the earth's electromagnetic field and waves, and our breath as we inhale and exhale, and the sounds of our own heartbeat, the flub dub, and the spaces between our breathing and heartbeat create these auditory feelings that are comforting and ever present. These all have a rhythm that we deeply know without ever bringing that knowing into awareness and are often part of transformative, regenerative sound healing and raising consciousness. In our collective history, when we go back to when each of our ancestors lived in villages, there was always a drum and a drum rhythm wherever we were on earth, the drum sound was used to gather people together and to unite the listeners through the repetition of the sound and the patterns of sound. When ancient people knew is that the repeating sounds allowed the listeners as individuals and the group to entrain to the sound through their body, through their heartbeat and their brain waves, which is also a rhythm and the respiration that we now identify as meditation, a non-ordinary state of consciousness. The drum sounds and rhythm facilitate transferring from what we call ordinary consciousness into repetitive, receptive, and restorative states where inner connection, inspiration, and insight are also cultivated as well as all the regenerative effects on our physical, mental, emotional, immune, biochemical systems. The second part of this profound wisdom is knowing that we need to connect into these states regularly where we change our heart rate, breathing patterns, and brain waves for our longevity to reverse the effects of the de degeneration of our physical body, mental, emotional systems, and disconnect from our inner selves. The shifting out of what we call ordinary consciousness into what we call non-ordinary consciousness is vital for our physical body, mind, and emotions, and spirit because we are hardwired to develop 
and use different brainwave states. This is because these other states, these non-ordinary states, help us process, connect deeply into our inner wisdom, are regenerative, they develop a connection to our heart and to our resilience and release stress. We also know that calling them non-ordinary states is an incorrect term because our ordinary consciousness is only one level and there are different levels of consciousness and they are all ordinary. And knowing they're ordinary means that we engage them for our longevity. The changes in our heartbeat and breathing, which is slowing down and releasing stress and inflammation and simultaneous changes in our brainwaves, takes the listener into receptivity while releasing the hypervigilant, which is called the ordinary state, at, that we're in during our ordinary waking state and where stress, chronic stress and inflammation and trauma are stored and continued. So you can see from research how releasing, quote, ordinary consciousness is vital for our proceeding and healing and expanding and developing and growing. We also know not all sound patterns have the same effect. These transformative healing sound patterns are not the rhythms of the fabulous 50s, heavy metal, punk, popular music, or most of classical music. The healing sound rhythms are unique in their repetition, in their tone, in their patterns, and their resonance and rhythms. Moving beyond the current paradigm that previously built the now outmoded idea that our predilection towards physical and mental illness is related to genetics. We now know it is stress, the compounding of exposure to trauma in early life, and the release of the stress hormone cortisol and inflammation that are underlying characteristics that cause the dysregulation for mental and physical illness, that without an intervention, those predilections are triggered. When we have an intervention, which is a lifestyle change, a long lasting lifestyle or methods for our life, we change how our body responds. When we consistently listen to specific sound patterns and rhythms, we are in the relaxation response where we develop and deepen the changes that are powerfully beneficial for us, not as a one-time intervention, but as a lifelong practice that deepens over time. When we consistently listen to these specific sound healing patterns and rhythms, we positively change, our responses positively change, our outlook positively changes, our resilience and problem solving changes, our ability to develop, grow, and access levels of higher consciousness and higher heightened awareness develops and grows. When we listen to these particular transformative sound patterns, they carry us and hold us in this quote, non-ordinary unquote state, then our normal vigilant state, our breathing, our heartbeat and our brainwaves simultaneously, gently and easily change without effort or focusing on the need to change, not in silence, but simply by listening. This is because we are entrained, also known as resonating to and with the resonance with the sound patterns. And when this continues, entrainment occurs, allowing us to sustain the transformative connection that is the relaxation response. That's why using curated sound and music in groups and as an individual is particularly beneficial for practitioners to use. The sound listening can be considered a potent intentional activity that aligns resonance for all the listeners harmoniously and easily. As ancient people innately knew, sharing the sound and music listening experience is essential for connection within uplifting consciousness and perception 
releasing trauma and regeneration of the neurological system and other systems mentioned before. This is telling us that human beings are not designed to stay or thrive in one level of consciousness all the time. Another way of saying this is what we call non-ordinary consciousness, which is heightened consciousness is normal and required to not only for our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual wellness, but required for our development because there is a diminishing of stress and inflammation and an increase in dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and GABA production. The rhythms that transform us now and change our entire system from chronic stress that result in mental, emotional, and physical illness to resilience, re mental and emotional regulation, healing, restoration from trauma, gaining positive feelings, even anti-aging, and develop insight, creativity, problem solving, and intuition resonate within us. As in ancient practices, use of sound rhythms regenerate. The, these methods are correlated with scientific research showing physical, mental, emotional, neurological, biochemical transformation, up-leveling and expanding and raising consciousness. 